So how exactly do we combine that geek mindset that we all have with that artistic side, the Shakespeare side that I think exists within all of us? Well, I think we could potentially combine pop culture like Star Wars with Shakespeare to create something really special. Let's, uh, let's have you guys watch the video to find out exactly if this works. The, the genesis of, of Zoom's online productions, it was the idea of right now, obviously in the middle of this pandemic that we're all going through and the quarantines, it has hit the theater community so strongly because our whole business relies on being together as, as actors and performers and just artists in general. I mean, we, we need that face-to-face -face time in order to create that art, or at least we needed to. And that's why I started seeing kind of these online productions or variants on those productions, just readings or things that certain artists were putting together. And, you know, my first thought was like, oh, I wish I could be doing something like that. I think that'd be super fun. So I started reaching out to people and kind of like, hey, if you guys need people, let me know, you know, that sort of thing. And eventually it just got to the point of like, well, I could potentially do something like that. I don't know how to do that, but I'm sure people have figured it out. So I started doing the research, going on to YouTube, and it just became a great project for me to spend time on, especially because right now I ain't got nothing else to do. So it was great to have so much time to develop that. Um, and then I reached out to a lot of the actors that I've worked with over the past couple of years down here in Orange County in particular. Um, the first big handful of people I reached out to were from a production that Alchemy Theater Company put together of Cyrano um, that I acted in. And then last summer I performed in Shakespeare by the Sea for Henry V. So I figured if I was going to be doing something that dealt with Shakespeare, those were the actors I wanted to reach out to because they had experience working in classics. Um, and we needed that in order for people to understand what we were saying. And the whole reason I even chose to do Shakespeare is because my parents gave me the first book for William Shakespeare's Star Wars that an, uh, that an author named Ian Dosher, I believe I'm saying it right, um, he transcribed that play. And I was like, I've been wanting to put together a reading of this. Why not do it now? So that's where the idea of all of this kind of came together so that way we could still practice and do what we know how to do, uh, even if we aren't exactly doing it in the way we're used to doing it. <laughs> so the, the importance of the author that we've been finding out about, he always says these afterwards um, in, his, in his books, uh, explaining the choices that he's made. And that's been one of the biggest joys uh, is that we've been discovering what he's been doing with these books as we go through them. I, I know it sounds weird. I don't read them beforehand. I skim through them to find the parts. That way I can assign them and make sure everybody's ready to go. But the, one of the biggest things that we just enjoy so much is the surprises that he puts in these books. There are scenes that are not in the movie that he's thrown in there. Basically, it's like, it's almost like that scene from The Mandalorian where those stormtroopers are just sitting on their bikes after they, spoilers, they kidnapped Baby Yoda on the last episode. So they're sitting there and they're just talking to each other. There are so many scenes like that in these plays that are just so funny like they they're these two i don't i think they were just imperial guards talking about how building codes in the empire will require that there's a giant trench in the middle of all of their buildings there's just inexplicably a hole like a giant hole that anyone can just fall down in all of their buildings and it's just we're dying laughing like if you see them in the video we mute our mics but we're laughing so hard because it's just that meta commentary that he's thrown in there but on top of that, not only have there been overt Shakespeare references, he's referenced things like Doctor Who, um, he's referenced Star Trek, he's referenced all these other little things that's been so fun for us, like some of us kind of miss them, but other people are like, oh my gosh, did you guys catch that earlier? He just throws them in there and they're so subtle that if you don't know, if you're not a fan of those things, you're probably going to miss them, but that's those extra little details that he throws in there, like Yoda speaks in haiku uh, and Boba Fett 
speaks in prose instead of verse because, and he explained this at the end, Boba Fett, compared to all the other characters in, in the original trilogy, is kind of that salt of the earth, like he's more of a normal person compared to these really elevated characters. So he wrote him a little differently and he created his own version of the Ewok language. So I think that's been the coolest thing is to not only have this Shakespeare backbone to this entire thing, but also to kind of see what he geeks out about and what Ian Dosher enjoys to uh, kind of modernize these texts. So I, I really enjoyed that and seeing what he, the flavors he adds to each of these. So what we've done so far is the, basically the original trilogy of uh, Star Wars Shakespeare. So, you know, we got uh, Verily A New Hope, then we have The Empire Striketh Back, and we're finishing with The Jedi Death Return. Um, so we've been going through all of those. Took a little bit of a break because we, we felt that, you know, with, with all of the protests going on, that it was a good opportunity to just kind of pause. Um, we didn't really feel like it was a good time for us to be putting out more of that content and maybe distracting from the conversations that were happening. But at this point, we, we want to put out that light and love into the world that way people have something that maybe recharges them and to continue having those conversations and doing what they're doing. So at this point we've done, uh, basically split each one of those plays in half. Uh, that way we're not online for three and a half hours because they're all five act plays just like Shakespeare. Um, and so we usually do acts one through three for part one and then acts four and five for part two. And it's been kind of cool because we've been developing this, uh, what we've been how we've been presenting it as we've been going. The first, the first one was pretty straightforward. All of us were on screen. We just kind of read along. We had a good time. But then we chose to kind of go a different way with uh, episode five and add in a drinking component, have some fun, throw in some drinking rules. That way people could kind of follow along with us. And we added in things like anytime an overt Shakespeare reference is made or anytime R2-D2 has a monologue because he has plenty of English speaking monologues in these plays uh, when he's alone on stage. So I guess technically there's soliloquies, but you know, he gets to express thoughts that maybe you don't know about uh, in the movies. Uh, and then, you know, anytime someone dies, we have to drink in their honor. So it's been that. And then we've been playing with the format of being on Zoom Maybe for the more intimate scenes, everyone else turns off their camera. That way it's just maybe Luke and Leia or Han and Leia or Luke and Darth Vader. You know, that way we get to center in on those characters for those moments. Um, so that's been the majority of what we've been focusing on. We, and then I think what we've chosen to do, because Ian Dosher's written, rewritten a lot of movies in the Shakespeare style. Um, so we kind of did a poll on our Facebook group and it looks like the next one we're going to do is Much Ado About Mean Girls. So he's transcribed the Mean Girls movie into Shakespearean. So that's the next one that we're going to do, kind of break up the Star Wars trilogies. And then after that, we'll probably go into the prequels because he's done all nine episodes. I think the thing that I enjoy working with these actors the most is just their, their passion and their creativity. They have the background in these types of shows. And that's the biggest thing, at least while we're doing Shakespeare versions of these movies that we need, because it's so easy with a Shakespeare play for people to kind of get lost in translation. And that's not what I want. I mean, it's, it's Star Wars. We want you to be able to enjoy it. We want you to be able to, when you hear Darth Vader say, no, I am your father, but in Shakespeare, we want you to be able to know that's the line that he's been saying. So that's the biggest thing that I look for to start with is just who do I know that has the foundational skill to be able to deliver these lines in a way that people get what's going on. Because there is that, that, that extra level of, of that logic brain that I spoke about earlier that, that people need uh, in order for these shows to be enjoyable. The best thing I think that's been unexpected about all of this is that it's like I said, we've evolved as we've been going and we've just been having more and more fun with it as because we have that foundation, we can go quote unquote, it's still on script, but you know, off script a little bit. Like we, we've been, people have been throwing in random accents. Uh, 
the, they've been dressing up in certain ways. Like we have one of our actors that put together, he has a little Yoda doll that he put a little Shakespeare rough around the neck in order for him to, to be Yoda. So it's that, that extra layer that they're all bringing to it that's making this so much fun for us. And the fact that we've gotten to this point where you know, we took a little bit of a break and then we came back and we had so many people uh, of our performers that have been like, oh, I missed this. You know, I, I love that we've been getting together to do this. It's been such a nice break for me from everything else that's been going on. And that was the biggest gift to me for all of this is that we've all just been enjoying each other's company so much that we can just let loose and, and have as much fun with these scripts as possible possible um so i look forward to that every single time we do this the biggest thing i want the audience to get away from this is just kind of the passion that we put into this is what we want to put out into the world for people you know people right now have a lot on their minds there's there's a lot going on just on a daily basis it feels like there's something else that we have to think about, worry about, be anxious about. Um, so I would never want these shows to be a distraction from the important things that are going on right now. Like there's a lot of, there's a lot of change and calls for, for progress in the world. Um, so I don't want us to distract from that, but I hope that people get a little bit of just enjoyment to kind of refuel themselves after, after a week of of whatever else has been going on in their lives so that's the biggest thing i hope people take away is just to kind of pause for a second laugh you know take a take a chance to just kind of enjoy what we're putting out there and then they can jump right back into whatever they were doing uh before but love laughter light all the good things that i feel like star wars kind of talks about anyway Fighting the good fight. Uh, it's very topical right now to, to, to look at the fact that, you know, these rebels uh, are facing just overwhelming odds and they still fight and they win. And I think that that's such an inspirational message right now. Uh, and yeah, you could get that by watching Star Wars. And I'd hope that we are also kind of putting that message out there by reading these shows. People have definitely said we, we got to do all the Star Wars shows, which I, I was like, I, I might want to be, I don't want to make it seem like we're only about Star Wars, but everybody that's been doing it, like everybody, oh, we got to keep going into Star Wars. So I was like, all right, all right. I, I will not, I won't say no to that because, you know, my background is all of the geeky stuff. So I'm totally all about continuing into that. Um, but, you know, Jeff Lowe also wrote the Butler monologues. So that could be something that we could also dive into down the road. Ian Dosher also reinterpreted uh, Back to the Future. So we got Get the Back to the Future that we could do in the future. He did a play on Macbeth called McTrump that might be fun to do. Um, so we definitely have a huge catalog to choose from. And I feel like I have to say we are doing these uh, for out of fair use. These are all not for profit in any way. Um, so this is just a way to hopefully bring attention to some of these books and some of these plays in ways that maybe they haven't gotten that attention before. Um, but for me, I think right now, this is exactly where we need to be. Uh, this is just kind of a fun break for all of us throughout the week to kind of come together and have a good time. And the best way people can help our uh, productions at this point is yeah, just to watch. Um, right now, I'm, I am one of the least savvy people with social media. So that is one of my goals now is to, to create some ways to really get the word out to people a little bit better. Because right now, it's mostly word of mouth via Facebook that people are, are posting our link uh, either a couple days or the night of uh, to let people know, hey, this is what's going on. Um, we have some subscribers that way they can watch the show after we're done instead of watching it live. Um, but I think, yeah, the biggest thing is just to find us on YouTube. Uh, it's called Zunes, Z-O-U-N-D-S with an exclamation part. 
exclamation point uh, online productions and just follow us there because I'll post um, the upcoming production usually on Sunday night. Um, that way you know kind of when it's coming up, but usually we're doing Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, so that's the best way, and then I'll eventually be rolling out some more uh, social media for people to follow. That way it's a little bit a little bit easier to find out what our schedule is instead of just kind of waiting to uh, hear about it on the wind. <laughs>